Joining us now in the studio is Barrister Ifani Ejofo, who is the lawyer of uh, separatist leader Unam de Kanu. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Ifani. Thank you so much for having me on your program. Good to see you. Okay, uh, looks like the people have since been tired of the sit at home order. Uh, but yet again, IPOP is saying it's not ready to disband its uh, militant arm, ESN. Uh, what exactly do they really want? Well, the issue of. Um the development of ESN, I may not be able to comment on it mm. uh, because uh, they have a spokesperson that will probably not attend social. more powerful. Yeah, of yeah, course. Uh, okay, then. Okay, so in, in, in will, that case. I may have to limit myself to the level, to the compliance with them. Um, that is given by Mazin Namdekano. Yeah, but the, the, um, with the look of things, what we're seeing in, in the uh, states covered, mm -hmm. uh, looks like they have been uh, tired of it already, and then the governors and uh, the local security agencies are cooperating with them. No, let, let me just emphasize this. The start home is there today because of his uh, handwritten notes, mm -hmm. which was made public a few weeks back. Before now, um, people have been deceived by misinformation, deliberate falsehood being pushed around by someone who sits in comfort of his children from Finland to be deceived by people. <coughs> of course, now they can never sanction start home from inception. Uh, so, and that position was made known to the world by the Global Peace Movement, which IPOB represents it. Mm -hmm. So, but um, because of um, the criminal elements, actually the criminal elements in the Southeast, which did not receive enough attention by security agents. So, and IPOB has severally denounced mm -hmm. those people who have no affiliation whatsoever within Namdekano, and that, they're not working with, with him, they're not working for him, they're not actually pushing for his release that they're executing their own criminal agenda. So, but with this handwritten note, which was made public a few weeks back, people became convinced that now it has come to the end of this rascality and criminality. Uh, so that will tell you, that simply means that if Nandekano will issue a handwritten note ordering total cancellation of sit at home in the entire Southeast from through the confinement where he's been detained at the DSS consortium today. That means if he release, if he has been released in line with the judgment of the Court of Appeal, there will be total peace in the Southeast. And of course, there are way that flyers are being distributed across the Southeast today, and people are being encouraged to come out and also go about their normal businesses, which is apparent from what I've just seen now. Mm -hmm. So the thing that home is dead and buried in the entire Southeast. Uh, the, uh, I mean, that's you quoting. Uh, Namde Kano, who <laughs> actually made that statement mm. uh, a few days ago that the seat at home in the southeast is dead and uh, buried. Now that there seems to be progress being made in that direction, what is the next line of action now to get Namde Kano uh, released? I mean, you just mentioned that. That Look, what, what confidence really are you giving the federal government that if Namde Kano is released, that peace indeed will return uh, to the southeast? Okay, let me just um, kind of make a clarification mm -hmm. from scenario playing out, playing out now. Nam can issued an order from DSS dungeon where it's being detained, and that order is being observed, obeyed in the entire South East today. That tells you simply that whosoever is frustrating, is preventing his release, or who is refusing him to be released in line with the law of court, are those who are encouraging this rascality, criminality, and violence going on in the entire South East. Because, because our people like him and they listen to him. So if he's out now today, that will bring that will bring the total peace to the entire Southeast. And we're not asking for much. What we're asking the flag government to do is just simply to obey the other government of the Court of Appeal. That's all. That's all because it has been it has been discharged by the judgment of the Court of Appeal delivered on the on the on the thirteenth of October two thousand twenty two. Then they appeal against that judgment, which is now coming up for here on September 14th. So today, there is no order of court legitimizing his continued detention in the cost of the, of the SDSS. So we are, going, we are going back to court, court uh, Spring Court on 14th of September. What we are asking the federal government to do, in simple wisdom, obey the court, the judgment of the court of, of court of appeal, their own court. That's all. Okay. And, right. and, and what is playing out now yes. has shown that if Nam the is released today, because our people love him, right. then well, that, would be, in that, that would bring the total peace to the South East. Yeah. In that case, right. um, recall that uh, it's not this uh, current administration that detained him. Uh, so, um, 
if you say the federal government should obey the court's order, mm -hmm. that's, an, that's an order. But then, uh, what uh, briefing have you oh, had with the current... It's um, continuing. I, I know that. Yeah, I just hold on. I know that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, then, um, but some would say that you need a current administration. You need to give the current administration some time to settle in and then uh, get proper briefing. Have you had a round table uh, with uh, the current administration? Now, let me just say this. Uh, you see, we are talking about respect to rule of law and order of court. Yeah. We have gone beyond certain stage now. We are at a stage where the Court of Appeal, Court of Intermediary Judiciary, has made a pronouncement. It's not an order, it's a judgment of the Court of Appeal. Mm. So the government must respect that order. Now, as it stands today, there is no charge today pending, pending against him in any court in Nigeria. And that judgment said, do not charge him before any court. He cannot be charged before any court on any offense, any indictment whatsoever. Release him unconditionally. That's what the judgment of the court of appeal says. It's not my own judgment. It's the court of appeal that wrote it. And it's a unanimous judgment. So are you telling me that you're going to set aside the judgment of the court of appeal and go into a roundtable discussion with the federal government? What are you asking the government to do is to obey their own court order and court judgment. That's all. So I've gone beyond this. Because there's no charge against him today. Right. Okay, uh, apparently um, there's been the issue of access to Nam I mean, his physicians, you know, gaining access and checking out uh, his health uh, status and all of that. Tell us about that. Has he, I mean, uh, the doctors, have they been granted access to Nam Kanu now? What exactly is his uh, state of health? You know, you're aware that um, it's a matter of common knowledge on 20th of uh, July. Uh, that was last month. Uh, mm. Court delivered a landmark judgment, Honorable Justice uh, Bintan Yaku, directing the SSS to allow him access to his medical doctors oh. and also and also avail him of medical um, records. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the court said he will visit his medical doctors after the facility of the SSS and also have interface and parallel uh, medical examination. Uh, they substantially comply because uh, at least as it stands today. He has had access to one of the doc doctors recommended by him to him by his wife. Mm -hmm. So remaining the second person, which I believe in the, the most the people in the next couple of days, he also have access to the second person. So we also await about the SSS. They are yet to avail him of the medical records, which the court directed him to 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 give to him. So we believe, we believe that within Why this exactly period, is that? Are you finding out exactly why the DSS is holding on to those records? No, we keep on reminding them. We don't know why. But um, and uh, formal notification to that effect, communication has been established, has been sent across to them by Professor Michael Zeko Medley Council. So and we're expecting compliance any month from them. Because today, I, I also reminded them about the, the necessity to comply with this uh, directive of, court of, court of, um, of the court judgment. So, and also the need for him to uh, take further step, which I may not be able to make public at this, um, right. at this platform. So, but um, we are believing at least substantially we can comply. And we're taking further steps to ensure that um, they also allow him access to the second person, which will happen any month from now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but you know, because we had an issue with them before now, this was an order made by court sometime 2021 mm -hmm. and they refused to obey it because court said he, has, he must have access to three persons that they go mm -hmm. which include his medical doctor so and his medical physician the medical doctor came sometime in october 2021 to see him and they uh, 22 to see him and they refused access dr sifa in okorochuku before he traveled so and the uh, portion to which we now went to court to seek for order of commandamus and um, of course the court granted us leave to proceed and afterwards um, a judgment was delivered in a, an application fully moved, uh, duly moved by, by our late counsel, Professor Michael Zeko Messian. So, and on 20th of July 2023, the judgment was delivered. And that has been served on the SSS, expecting that. Uh, and they, 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 before then, they started uh, making arrangements to comply. But immediately, the court judgment was served on them, they complied. So, and we're expecting full compliance as time progresses. So. So, but it's important for me to correct using this platform to correct because yes, uh, go ahead. Uh, because um, I there are a lot of misinformation out there that for us to uh, let, let's correct this misinformation before now hitherto it's to be made clear that the criminal elements who have been hitherto enforcing the statute in terms it has no any form of affiliation with IPOB or Namdekano and they are not working for him they are working for someone 
who goes to work on Mondays and who also whose tithe he had with Finnish lady also goes to court on Monday, goes to work on Mo goes to school on Monday. But in Ibuland, the children of our children do not go to do not go to you court seem on to Monday. You're reluctant to okay. mention this name. Are you talking about Simon Epa? I'm talking about Simon, of course. Okay, now, on the hints right. of that, as we mm. round off, in mm. a few mm. seconds, uh, mm. uh, the current administration has uh, vowed to uh, keep to the rule of law. Uh, in case it gets released, uh, obeying the court order, if Inamde County gets released, how is it then going to go about uh, pursuing his, um, his agenda of uh, uh, liberation the, of, his, the, the, of his region? The, the fact is that it remains that Inamde County has to be engaged. And that step has not been taken by federal government. Engaged in what sense? I mean, in politically engaged, in discussing actually what led to what he's doing. Mm. But he's still within, within his right and right of... Um, of the global peace movement of IPOB to achieve for their right. It's a stamp laws. It's their stamp like right, as clearly provided and, and protected under the constitution. So because it's a right to self-determination, which they've been exercising. So if our government actually wants to engage them and discuss with them and find out what is happening, they have the right to do that. But since that exception of this movement, our government has never seen it fit to engage in them they can. But what they are doing is to arrest him, put him in cell, get him out, make effort to kill him. Of course, they are aware of what happened on 14 September 14, 2017, when they evaded his premises on, on 14 September. And when he was preparing to come to court on 11th of October that, that same year, and over 28 persons was killed in an attempt to kill him. So is that how to go about it? Is, is there a chance that Nam Dekano may be willing to, you know, uh, change from this... Uh, you know, the desire to want a Biafra, uh, the desire for a Biafra nation. Is he willing to he, he say, the Biafra, step down on the, that? The Biafra project is a, is a divine project and uh, a project uh, being operated within the ambits of law and it's a non-violent project. So I, I don't think anybody will kill that idea. We'll say about, um, but the modalities and other things can be ironed out and discussed with federal government. Right. So it's a, an idea that has come to stay. If I had your voice, cancel to Namde Kano. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsnight tonight.